It was a stormy night, the kind that makes the house creak and groan as if it's alive. I was home alone, my parents having left for a weekend getaway, trusting me with the house. I had always relished these moments of solitude, a chance to prove my independence. But tonight, the howling wind and the relentless rain tapping against the windows made everything feel different, more sinister. I was curled up on the couch, a warm blanket around me, and a horror movie playing on the TV. I knew it wasn't the best choice, given the weather and my current situation, but I loved the adrenaline rush. As the movie reached its climax, my phone buzzed with a notification. I glanced at the screen. It was a message on Snapchat from someone I didn't recognize. The message read, I'm outside your house. I felt a chill run down my spine. This had to be a joke, right? Maybe one of my friends trying to scare me. I got up and walked to the window, parting the curtains just enough to peer outside. The front yard was empty, illuminated only by the dim glow of the street lamp. There was no one there. I let out a nervous laugh, shaking my head at my own paranoia. I texted back, very funny, who is this? And returned to my movie, but the uneasy feeling lingered. Fifteen minutes later, my phone buzzed again. I hesitated before picking it up. The new message read, I'm inside your house. My blood ran cold. I felt every hair on my body stand on end. This had escalated from a prank to something far more serious. My mind raced through the possibilities. Was someone really inside? I needed to be sure. Grabbing the nearest object, a heavy candle holder, I tiptoed through the house checking each room methodically. The kitchen was dark, the only light coming from the moon filtering through the window. Nothing seemed out of place. I moved to the dining room, then the bathroom, and finally my parents' bedroom. Each room was empty. My breathing started to slow, and I almost believed I was overreacting. Then, as I stepped into the hallway, I noticed something odd. The door to my bedroom, which I distinctly remembered closing, was now ajar. My heart pounded in my chest as I approached it. The candle holder gripped tightly in my hand. I pushed the door open with a trembling hand. The room was dark, the only light coming from the small nightlight plugged into the wall. I scanned the room, looking for any signs of an intruder. Everything seemed normal until I noticed the shoebox under my bed had been moved. It was a small detail, but in that moment it felt monumental. I knelt down, reaching for the shoebox. As I slid it back into place, I caught a glimpse of something out of the corner of my eye. My heart stopped. There under the bed were a pair of eyes staring back at me. I screamed and stumbled backward, dropping the candle holder. The figure under the bed moved quickly, too quickly. I scrambled to my feet and ran out of the room. My mind in a frenzy. I needed to get out of the house. I ran for the front door, fumbling with the lock. As I threw the door open and bolted outside, I looked back and saw a shadowy figure standing in the hallway, watching me. I didn't wait to see if they would follow. I ran to my neighbor's house, pounding on the door frantically. When they finally answered, I was a hysterical mess, barely able to explain what had happened. They called the police, who arrived within minutes, but it felt like an eternity. The officers searched my house thoroughly. They found no one, no signs of forced entry, no intruder hiding in the shadows. They told me it was probably a prank, but the look in their eyes said they believed otherwise. I spent the rest of the night at my neighbor's house, jumping at every sound, unable to shake the feeling of being watched. The police promised to keep an eye on the house, but it did little to calm my nerves. The next day, my parents came home early, worried sick after hearing my story. They were relieved to find me safe, but concerned about the psychological toll 
the experience had taken on me. We decided to install security cameras around the house, hoping it would give me some peace of mind. That night, as I lay in bed, every creak and groan of the house felt amplified. I stared at the ceiling, too afraid to close my eyes, when I finally drifted off to sleep. It was fitful and plagued by nightmares. Days turned into weeks, and slowly the fear began to fade. Life returned to normal, or as normal as it could be after such an ordeal. 